Lately, I've been dipping my programming toes into the pool of Godot. I really like the engine and I want to do more stuff with it, so I figured I'd take my own advice from this video about how to pick a game engine in the first place, and I got cracking on writing a small game. I figured a good choice for a small game would be Snake, a fan favorite, and it shouldn't be that difficult to write it. I mean, props to Godot. Thanks to the engine, I was able to get through all the gaming stuff pretty quickly, like the general setup of the game, and that gave me the opportunity to get back to being a really bad programmer without any delay. Before we dive into the setup though, I just wanted to let you guys know about the Discord server. We've been putting a lot of time and effort into it to get it up to scratch and create a nice platform for us to build a good community on. Check it out, it will be linked in the description down below. Alright, so let's take a look at the setup. The main scene is just an empty node which contains all the guts of our game alongside a script that manages the score and all other objects in our hierarchy. Inside of it, we have our player, which is a rigid body, and that just allows it to interact with physics. We also give it a shape and a sprite so that we can see what it looks like. Then it has a script which manages how the player can move the main character. The boundary objects constrain the game to this little square, and the game will end if a player collides with any of the boundaries. We also have a hood which allows the player to to see their score and start the game when they click a button. Finally, we have a start position that defines where the player will spawn. Now for why I'm such a bad programmer. I decided a good way to approach the problem of the snake growing each time a drop is munched is to add a new tail node, which is basically the same as the player node except it needs to move in a way that matches the instructions of the player. Based on the reaction I got from the community last time I mentioned having a hard time doing something in Godot, there is probably a built in node that encapsulates the whole game of snake that I could just add, but I don't know it and I'm sure I'll read about it in the comments. I figured the best way to do this was to track the inputs of the player along with the position of the player when they pressed an input and then make each tail object follow the same instruction as the player. If that sounds like a complicated way to achieve what seems like a simple thing to accomplish, then great, we're on the same page and my implementation of this is just as complicated as my explanation sounds. But thankfully, after many more hours than I anticipated and expected to spend on this, it finally works uh, perfectly. I think that's that for writing Snake and Godot for me though, I've learned a lot from this experience, but I do want to move on to some cooler projects that I have in mind. I'll share more information with you on those ideas in a little bit though, but here are some take homes from my Snake experience. I think it's important to stick to the roots of programming. Remember things like classes. They can help you maintain your code and make things a lot easier to read in the long run. So just because you're using GDScript or learning a new language or whatever the case may be, just don't forget those. Stick to the fundamentals of programming. Secondly, signals. Signals are super useful and very powerful, but take care with them. Decide on a standard and stick to it. Because whilst they are very powerful and they are very useful, they can become very confusing to read in your code. And if you look at your code a week later, you might be like, oh, why is this signal from this signal pointing to this method? Oh, it can get confusing. The little green arrows can only help you with your bad programming habits so much. Pick a standard and stick to it. Anyway, I think that's that for this video and I'll catch you on the next one.